All right, so um, I'm starting a new project. It's uh, building some cabinets, some wall cabinets for the reloading room. Uh, the base cabinets and the countertop work really well, so what I'm going to do now is build three cabinets, two 24-inch cabinets and a 30-inch cabinet, and they're going to be about 28 inches high. So what I'm going to do, um, I've already cut my plywood down to cuttable size pieces using the uh, circular saw and a bar clamp. Right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these down the size and then we'll build the side panels using a dado blade. Um, we'll cut some rabbits and some dados and then we'll assemble the, uh, assemble the cabinets. We're using a table saw, a dado blade, a drill, a brad nailer, some clamps, and probably the most important tool was measuring tape, a pencil, and a cut plan for my plywood. Uh, this is what made me be able to determine if I have enough wood and to make the best use of my wood. So, well, already now that I have the table saw cleared off, I am going to get my safety glasses and start making my first cuts. Now, one of the things I've done is I've labeled my uh, plywood after I've done the rough cutting, and on this one here, I've got four side panels, and they are going to be 28 by 11 inches. cut the top and the bottom for the 24 inch cabinets and what I'm going to do is cut uh, both tops and both bottoms all at the same time all with the same saw blade settings uh, that way I know they're going to be consistent and they'll uh, mix and match Four pieces cut uh, simultaneously using the same fence settings, etc., and uh, they're ready uh, to be assembled. All right. So what I'm going to do is cut the uh, side piece blanks, and I haven't moved the fence at all, or the, changed the blade at all from when I cut the tops and the bottoms. So that's important because we want the width of the cabinet to be. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to mark off my uh, cuts for the uh, side panels of the cabinets. So this will be the bottom of the cabinet and this is the inside part and I'm going to do a dado for the bottom piece. On the top, I'm going to do a three-quarter inch rabbit. And the reason I'm marking these, and not particularly accurately, is just to depict what it's going to look like. And that way when I start making the cuts, I won't get confused because that has happened in the past. Now this rabbit here will go in the back and it will be a quarter inch deep and that will accept the backboard. So when I bring the cabinet together, uh, this will be the front, this will be the bottom down here, and then the top. And then the back will have a little slot cut out for a piece of uh, quarter inch plywood. So, that, so now it's time to get organized. Uh, what I'm going to do is just put these panels away and then switch to my uh, dado head cutter. So what we're going to do right now is, yeah, stop, pause. Okay. So 
So the next step before we put the cabinets together is I'm going to drill the holes for the adjustable shelving. I have this jig that I made up a few years ago out of plywood and basically it's just some holes uh, drilled just very accurately the same distance from the edge of the plywood and uh, two inches apart I believe. Now normally when I would drill these holes I would use a brad point bit but I can't find it so I'm going to use a regular bit since this is just for a workshop and what I've done is I've marked off my drill bit with a piece of tape so I know not to go much deeper than the uh, tape. So. So now we're going to move it over to the back side of the cabinet. Now I know I'm using clamps, but I've also used a piece of wood under and over top of it to prevent the marring of the wood. So here's our holes for the first one. And to course make this correspond, we're just going to flip this over and butt it right up against the edge. And make sure we do that with each and every one that we do. All right, so I've uh, dry fit one cabinet together and I came to the conclusion that I didn't compensate uh, for the backer board. So what I'm gonna do is just trim the uh, top and the bottom piece a quarter of an inch. I want the uh, backer board to be flush with the whole unit. So um, I need to just compensate for that. So I'm gonna do that right now at the table saw on all of my pieces. All right, so now I am going to uh, assemble the cabinets. So I have my two side pieces here and my bottom and my top. So I'm gonna use the, uh, okay, there's the bottom. I have the good side facing in the cabinet because you won't be able to see it into the cabinets, or at least that's the theory. A little bit of carpenter's glue. So now that I have the ends glued up, I'm just going to stick these things together and uh, let's see what we got here. A wet towel doesn't hurt to uh, wipe up the excess glue. secure them with a few brads. Alright, so since this is the top of the cabinet, what I want is I want the nicest piece being in, down, um, and the rougher piece on the top because I certainly won't be able to see the top of the cabinet. Alright, again, it should be pretty easy to do. Here and here. Okay, now I can kind of let that in place, but instead of that, again, I think I'm just going to run a brad in that. First one 
one in on each side. And voila, there's our cabinet. Uh, we just have to cut the quarter inch plywood for the back. So we'll do that and then we'll attach that with some brads and get ready to hang these on the wall. All right, to cut the uh, quarter inch plywood, what I'm gonna do is use a panel cutting jig that I have right here. Uh, now this is just a small one. Uh, I'm not gonna show you how to make one because there's probably a ton of videos on how to make a better one than I have. But what it does is it helps you cut large pieces of stock with a small saw and um, it does it very accurately. So I'll be using that to cut my uh, back pieces. Um, actually this one's just a little small for what I'll be doing but it will get me through this project. Now when I'm shooting these uh, nails in, I just make sure I put a slight angle on them just so they won't uh, burst through the side of the cabinet, but I don't put them on so deep that they come through the other, the outside of the cabinet. At least that's the plan. Oh, and no nail, and no brad nails went through the sides. Awesome. As you can see here, the cabinet's done. I've got my adjustable shoveling. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this on the wall. Now, I could have datered out a piece here and uh, had a nailer strip come across the top, but I thought for the workshop there'd be no need. So what I'm going to do is just run a small strip of plywood right at the top, and then I'm going to drill that into the studs of the wall. And I'll show you what that looks like um, on the uh, finished product. All right, so here are the finished cabinets. Um, I just started putting a face frame on it, but really that's not that important. Um, I've just hung those on the wall, and all I've used to secure them to the wall is a small cleat of wood on the top, and I'll just show you that detail right now. All right, so to uh, secure this to the wall, um, I just put a, a cleat here, and just cut it to size to the cabinet, and tried to get it as, flush, as close to flush to the top as possible. Those are attached to studs in the wall, so uh, it's good and so solid, and well, it's not going anywhere, and it should carry lots of weight. So, um, next part of this uh, project I'll do later on. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to get pins so I can move the adjustable shelving up and down, and perhaps I'll face finish uh, putting the face frame on the cabinets, and maybe make some doors. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you get a chance to make something for your workshop, too.